Praise the Lord. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this hour. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for your word. Lord, we pray that you give us real faith. Abiding faith. Transforming faith. Saving faith. Sanctifying faith. Empowering faith in Jesus' name. We pray that our faith will not be dead. Our faith will not be shallow. Our faith will not be traditional. Our faith will not be theoretical. It will be faith that works by love in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're coming to James chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 14. James chapter 2. Reading from verse 14. What does it profit, my brethren? Do a man say he has faith and has not works? Can faith save him? What does it profit, brothers and sisters and children of God? Though a man says he has saving faith and he does not have the fruit, of that saving faith. A man says he has sanctifying faith and he does not have the proof and the evidence of that sanctifying faith. A man says he has a transforming faith, a faith that comes into life and transforms that life, changes that life, and we cannot see the evidence of a changed life. What does it profit then, brothers and sisters, where a man may say, it's just profession, it's just expression that has no experience, that has no deep root in the faith. It says, if a man says, he professes, he has faith, and he has not works, he has no deeds, he has no doing, he has no fruit, he has no proof, can that faith save him? If you say you are forgiven, prove it by the life you live. If you say you are saved, prove it by the life you live. If you say you believe in the Lord and that you have turned away from the world and you have turned unto the Lord, prove it by the life you live. If you say you have faith for sanctification, you have sanctifying faith, Prove it by the love you demonstrate unto God. If you say you have that empowering faith that you have been to Pentecost and he has given you that power of the Holy Ghost, you'll need to prove that by the expression, by the exploits you do through that empowering faith. In verse 15, if a brother or sister be naked, and destitute of daily food and one of you say unto them depart in peace say unto them depart in peace be ye warmed and filled notwithstanding ye give them not those things those things that prove that you love them those things that prove that you have practical faith those things that prove that you have the faith to back up your expression of blessing god bless you god bless you depart in peace and be warmed and filled notwithstanding you give them not those things which are needful to the body needful to its existence and needful to its health and needful to its satisfaction and needful to a life well worth living. What does it profit? Even so, faith, if it has not works, even so, faith, if it does not have fruit, even so, faith, if it does not have practical evidences, dead being alone. Yea, a man may say, that was faith, and I have works, show me thy faith without thy works. You cannot do that. Faith is invisible. 
It's only seen, it's only shown by the works you do, by the evidence, by what he produces. He says, and I will show you my face by my works. You know my face. If it's strong, you'll see the kind of fruit I bear. If that faith is great, you'll see the kind of fruit I bear. If that faith is permanent, perennial, always there, you'll see from the outward expression of my life that that faith is there, is always present there, and it is preeminent there, and it is permanent there. It says, I will show you my faith by my works, by the things I do. That believers, there is one God, okay, that does well, but please understand, the devils also believe there is one God and they tremble. But will thou know, O vain man, unprofitable man, shallow man, religious but not righteous man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham a father justified, revealed by works, established by works, made known that he's a friend of God by works, when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Do you see, seest thou, how faith wrought with his works? And by works was faith made perfect. By works, faith was made matured. Faith was made evident. And faith was made complete. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. Called the friend of God. And was like his friend, God. God is active. He was active. And God is profitable. He was profitable. God is loving. He was loving. God is dependable. He was dependable. And God is faithful. And the man was faithful. You see then how that by works... A man is justified, not by faith only, not by empty faith standing in isolation by itself. Likewise also was not Rehab the harlot justified by works. When she had received the messengers and sent them out another way, as the body without the spirit is dead, what will the hand do without the spirit? In achieve, it proves dead. And what will the mouth say? How can the mouth talk without the spirit? And the silent mouth is the evidence that the death has taken place. And the immovable feet never going anywhere, just stagnant, just dead. It's an evidence the spirit is gone out. It says, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Where there is faith, there'll be accompanying works where there is faith there will be abiding works where there is faith there will be appropriate works and it is brought out in that line of the song if you say you are forgiven if you say you are saved if you say you have met the Lord and you are connected with the Lord, stop saying, stop professing, prove it by the life you live. There is lively faith, faith that makes you come alive. 
People did not know you before. You didn't touch anybody's life before. You didn't turn anything around before. You didn't receive anything from heaven before. But now you have faith and we can tell, we can see. There's a living, abiding, appropriate faith that brings out works. That brings out fruit. That brings out the expression that leads to the experience. On the other hand, there is dead faith. It's inactive. It does nothing. It makes no change in a man. There's no transformation. There's no difference between the past and the present. Just dead. As a dead man does not move, he does not move. As a dead man does not cry, he does not cry. As a dead man does not laugh, he does not laugh. As a dead man does not do anything and remains in that place, is helpless. You have to carry him. And there's only one place you can carry him to. You carry him to the grave. So dead faith has no action. Dead faith has no activity. And dead faith has no evidence by which we'll know that faith is there. And as you count the population of a country, and you don't count the dead men, you do not count dead faith as anything. As you are counting the number of your children, and you don't count those ones who have died, so is dead faith. You cannot count those who have dead faith among the children of God. There's lively faith, there's active faith, there's productive faith, and there is practical positive, progressing faith. On the other hand, there's an active faith that is totally dead. Dead faith characterizes dead souls. Dead faith characterizes dead backsliders. Dead faith characterizes dead church people, church members. They have nothing to show for the faith they profess. I pray your faith will not be a dead faith. My faith will not be a dead faith. My faith will be active. My faith will be loving. My faith will produce good abiding fruit. Yours will do in Jesus' name. Today we come to the message, the convincing proof of saving our faith. The convincing proof of saving faith. There are three things we're looking at as we look at this passage. Number one, the emptiness and deadness of faith without works. The emptiness and the deadness of faith without works. Point number two, the evidence and the discernment of faith through works. The works we do, the deeds we produce, the life we live, the things we give to other people, and the sacrifice we make unto God, the expression of our faith in works, the evidence and discernment of faith through works. Number three, the exploits and the demonstration of faith with works. The exploits and the demonstration of faith with works. Number one, the emptiness and the deadness of faith without works. Come back to James. Chapter 2, verse 17. Even so, faith, if it has not works, is dead being alone. Look at verse 20. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Verse 26. First, the body. Without the spirit is dead, 
So faith without works is dead also. Faith without works is dead also. And when it says faith without works is dead also, actually, the one who possesses only faith, faith alone, faith alone, faith alone, faith is the key. And faith is what I have. But there is no works, there are no deeds, there is no fruit, there's no transformation. And the fruit of the Spirit is not there. Obedience to the Word of God is not there. He's saying that man is a dead man. Dead faith, dead follower. I'm following Christ, but he has dead faith. I'm one of the faithful members of the body of Christ, but he has dead faith. The man is dead. Look at the scriptures. I'm looking at Genesis chapter 20, and I'm reading from verse 3. Genesis chapter 20, verse 3. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night, and said unto him, Behold, thou art but a dead man. Thou art but a dead man. For the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. How many people profess, I believe, I believe. I'm a child of God. I have faith in the Lord. I believe in Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe in Jesus Christ. He is my personal Savior. But they have another man's wife with them. And they hear the word of God that this is what you do. Give the woman to her husband. No, they don't want to do that. I believe in God already. And my faith in God cancels every activity and cancels obedience. Abimelech, behold, thou art but a dead man. For the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. We're looking at Proverbs chapter 21 Proverbs chapter 21 I'm reading from verse 16 Proverbs 21 verse 16 the man that wanders out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead there is a congregation in the sight of God. It's the congregation of the dead. Why? But they say they follow Christ. They say they believe in Christ. They say it was at a crusade that they raised up their hands and they became believers. It says, but no, he wanders away from the path of understanding. He wanders away from the understanding of Scripture. Whenever you talk about duty, whenever you talk about the fruit of repentance, and whenever you talk about the evidence of salvation, he says, I don't know about that. I don't want to know about that. All I know is I believe in Christ. I have faith in Christ. But he is in the congregation of the dead. He has dead faith we're looking at first timothy chapter five first timothy chapter five and we're reading from verse six first timothy chapter five we're reading from verse six in verse six but she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth she doesn't accept the message of the word of God. He that will be and she that will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. She doesn't accept, he doesn't accept the word of the Lord. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man, if any woman loves the things of the world, the love of the Father is not in him. I believe in God. 
I don't care about I can look like the world and drink like the world and I can do everything the world is doing. All I know is I believe. I believe. I believe in Christ. Dead faith produces a dead man. Dead faith produces a dead woman. And dead faith produces a dead nominal Christian. Dead faith produces a dead nominal church goer. But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. Revelation chapter 3. In Revelation chapter 3, I read from verse 1. Revelation chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 1. It tells us there, from the leaves of Jesus Christ himself, and unto the angel of the church, in Sadi's right. What a name, what a title, angel. What a position, what a privilege, angel. And what recognition, angel. To the angel of the church, in Sadi's right. This thing says he that has the seven spirits of God, the perfect, complete spirit of God, and the seven stars referring to all the churches, perfect and complete. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and art dead. See, it is possible to carry about dead face, the face that does nothing, the face that does only what she was doing before conversion, so-called, and the things she was doing, he was doing before he said, I place my faith in Christ. And the Lord looks at that and he says, I know your works, but we say that face without works is dead. And this person already has works. And Jesus is saying, Thou hast a name that thou livest and art dead. And look at Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1. Therefore, Leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from, tell me, dead works, dead works. There are dead works. They deaden the man himself. And there is nothing that inspires him is dead even the works are dead works have you found the people that speak to you they want to encourage you but their words bring no encouragement the words are dead words they fall flat they deaden you they discourage you you're just there have you found the people that you know and they try to make up a smile and they smile at you, but it's plastic. It's dead. It's not coming from the spirit. The soul is detached. The spirit is detached from that smile. Have you found the people that walk? Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Rise up and let's go. And they sluggishly get up. And they walk, you are walking, your mind is there, your heart is there, your focus is there, your vision is there. They are walking alongside, their heart is not there, the mind is not there, there's no goal, there's no destination, dead work. There are dead works. And Jesus said, I know your works. What kind of works? so dead it makes you dead even though you claim to be alive hebrews chapter 9 verse 14 hebrews chapter 9 verse 14 how much more shall the blood of christ who through the eternal spirit 
offered himself without spots to God. Purge your conscience from, tell me, dead works. I'm sure you found people who try, but you know, when the faith is dead, every other thing is dead. I don't want people to know that, you know, I'm just a dead log of wood. That I don't have the spirit. And I don't have the joy. The joy of living. And the excitement of living for God. And they try. They try to copy the believer. They try to copy the saints. But it doesn't work. It falls down flat. The voice is dead. You're hearing something. But... There's no power, and there's no spirit, and there's no inspiration, and there's no enlightenment from what you're hearing. They're just trying to do something, trying to say something. It's dead. And that's why the Lord said that there are people that claim to have faith, but the faith standing alone. The face by itself does not have the fruit. It is dead because it has no works. The emptiness and the deadness of faith without works. We're coming to Isaiah chapter 58. Isaiah chapter 58. I read from verse 2. I say 58, reading from verse 2. Faith without works. I may follow of Jesus Christ. We've heard that for too long. Stop saying, start doing. Show that faith. Demonstrate that faith. Are you keen at Isaiah chapter 58, verse 1? Cry aloud. Spear not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily, and delight to know my ways, as a nation that did righteousness, as a nation, like a nation, this copycat, as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God, they ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take the light in approaching to God, and yet it says, cry aloud and lift up your voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgressions. They claim to be saved, but they're still sinners. They claim to have faith, saving faith, but they still have sinful action and sinful lifestyle. Isaiah chapter 29, reading from verse 13. Isaiah 29, Verse 13, wherefore the Lord said, For as much as these people draw near me with their mouth, they say with their mouth, they profess just with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, but they have removed their hearts far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. You can tell all they have is um, faith that is dead, making a profession, but not having the reality of the life. Jeremiah chapter 8. Jeremiah chapter 8, reading from verse 4. Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 4. It says in verse 4, Moreover, 
thou shalt say unto them, Thus says the Lord, shall they fall and not arise? Shall they turn away and not return? It's talking about people that were saved before, long ago. But eventually, they fell into sin. And maybe the sin is known to other people. Maybe the sin is not known to other people. They just find that on their own voluntarily, they withdraw from the congregation of the people of God. When you used to see them, you cannot see them. And when you meet them on the way, you still say, sister, sister. When you meet them on the way, you still say, brother, brother. They carry the name. They've lost the nature. They carry the title. But there's no transformation again. It says they are falling and they refuse to rise up. They turn away and they refuse to return. Why then is this people of Jerusalem sliding back by perpetual backsliding? They're still at Jerusalem. They're still at the headquarters. But there's perpetual permanent backsliding. They hold fast deceit and they refuse to return. They deceive themselves and they refuse to return. I hearkened and heard, but they speak not aright. No man repented of his wickedness. They say, I'm still all right. I'm still in the faith. I still believe. I have only one God. This God is my God. And this Jesus is my Savior. But they have not repented of the weakness they fell into. Saying, what have I done? They have not said that. Everyone turned to his own cause. As the horse rushes into the battle. Yea, the stock in the heaven knows her appointed times, and the turtle and the crane and the swallow observe the time of their coming. But my people know not the judgment of the Lord. How do you say? How do you say? We are wise, and the law of the Lord is with us. Lo, certainly. In vain made he eat the pain of the scribe is in vain. Look at verse 12. In verse 12, it says, Were they ashamed when they have committed abomination? These people say they have faith. You find them in the offices. You find them in your community. You find them in your neighborhood. They profess faith. And yet when they commit abomination, there's no shame. They're used to it. Nay, they were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. Therefore, shall they fall among them that fall. In the time of their visitation, they shall be cast down, says the Lord. Look at their lamentation on the final day, in the final verses of that chapter. In verse 20, the harvest is past. The summer is ended, and we are not sick. They realize too late. Although they have been claiming they had faith, they had faith, no works, no fruit, no deeds. No approval of their lives. The good they want to do, they cannot do. The evil they don't want to do is exactly what they do. Because the faith cannot produce saving works. The harvest is past. The summer is ended. And we are not saved. For the heart of the daughter of my people and my heart. I am black, astonishment has taken hold of me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? 
Why then is the health of the daughter of my people not recovered? How do you describe such people? We're looking at 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5. 2 Timothy chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 5. It says in verse 5, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, the power to be godly, the strength to be godly, the grace to be godly, righteous. They don't have, but they have a form of godliness. You can see that form in their outward expression. You can do that without living faith, lively faith, abiding faith, saving faith. You can see that they sing the songs, they quote the scriptures, and they appear to be among the people of God. They have a form of godliness, but deny the path thereof. From such, turn away. Turn away. If you are like that, the church ought to turn away from you. I pray you will not be like that. I said, I pray you will not be like that. And if you see people who are like that, they're only professing, they're professing. And one of you, I'm a believer, I'm a member, I'm deeper. But to see how shallow they are, and you see there is no grace in their lives. And you see that even the things they promise to do for the Lord, they don't have the power to do. The power to be godly and the power to be gracious. Turn away from them. Titus chapter 1. Verse 16. Titus chapter 1, verse 16. They profess that they know God. They profess they are believers. They profess they have faith. But in works, they deny Him, being abominable. Can you think about a person coming to a church like this? for six months, for one year, and saying, I'm part of you, I have faith in God, I believe every word of God, I'm one of you, and I'm joining my hands with you, earnestly contending for the faith, and defending the faith, once delivered unto the saints. Can you imagine hearing abominable words from them? abominable language from them. Can you imagine having a same partner out there with abominable action? Can you imagine sharing on WhatsApp and sharing on the media, sharing with another person abominable pictures? They're not real. They're not children of God. Their faith is dead. They profess that they know God. And sometimes when you discover where they're coming from, you're passing by that area. And they're coming out from a particular building. And you say, what? Let me wait. Let me see. Can that be so and so? And you get near and you look at him and you look at her very well. Yes, is the man. And you say, Good evening, brother. He says, Good evening. I saw you coming out of that place now. That's abominable. He says, Brother, be praying for me. That's my weakness. I have faith. I believe. I'm a child of God. But you know, going to such places, that's my weakness. Dead face, dead man. They profess that they know God, but in works, they deny him. Being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work, reprobate. Jude chapter 1. In Jude chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 11. Jude chapter 1, verse 11. One to them. 
They have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for a watch and perished in the gain scene of Corinth. These are sports in your feast of charity. They come, they come, they come. But they are sports in your feast of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withers without fruit, twice dead, twice dead. They were dead in sins and trespasses before. They came to Christ. They were quickened and made alive. They've gone back into their vomit. They are dead again. Twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars, they wander from church to church. They wander from denomination to denomination. When you hear the message there, I can't stand that one. And so they go to another and they say, this is okay for me now. And then one day the preacher there preaches something about this wandering stars. They say, he's talking to me, he's talking at me. I cannot stay there. They go to another place, wandering stars, to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. I pray your faith will not be like that. And your faith will not be like that in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number two, the evidence and the discernment of faith through works. James chapter 2 verse 18. James chapter 2 verse 18. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith and I have works. There are people that have the idea that you cannot have everything God has provided in the watch of God. You have faith, keep it to yourself. I have works, I keep to myself. Works, that's not my area. Fruit, that's not my area. Behavior, good behavior, that's not my area. Obedience, that's not my area. And submission to the word of God, that's not my area. You know my area? Faith. Faith is my area. I believe. Healing, I believe. Deliverance, I believe. Marriage, I believe. Miracle children, I believe. Raising the dead, I believe. In the name of Jesus, the power in the name of Jesus, that's what I believe. I have faith, you have works. He has works, you have faith. No. They do not stand alone. Works without faith is dead. Dead works. Faith without works is dead. Dead faith. Look at this verse 18. Show me thy faith without works. You can't do that. Show me the wind without the breeze, without the freshness, without the blowing, without the moving of the tree. You cannot do that. It's invisible. Faith is invisible without works. It's what you do. It's the expression, experience of your life. It's the fruit of your action that makes us to know you have faith. I will show thee my face, the only way it can be shown, by my works. I will show you my face, how? By my works. 
Look at this illustration in Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2. Here is how you see face. Here is how you show face. Here is how you can give the evidence that there is faith. Look at it. In Mark chapter 2, verse 3. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him, for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. Nobody told them to do that, but they had faith in Christ's ability, Christ's power, and Christ's authority. They had faith in Christ's anointing. And how do you know they had the faith, what they did? They wanted to get the man to Christ. And they couldn't because of the crowd. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed when in the sick of the palsy lay. Look at verse 5. When Jesus saw their faith by their action, by their action, persistent action, by their action, persevering action, by their action, practical action. When Jesus saw their face, he said to the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Son, thy sin be forgiven thee. Luke chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 11. He saw their faith, saw their faith. How do you see face? How do you show face? By the words, by action. Luke chapter 17, verse 11. And it came to pass as I went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off, and he lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when Jesus saw them, he said unto them, Go, show yourselves unto the priests. He didn't touch them. He didn't even pray for them. But she said, go and show yourselves unto the priest. We're asking for mercy. We're asking for miracle. We're asking for cleansing. We're asking for a change in our situation. Go, show yourselves unto the priests. Lepers don't show themselves unto the priest except they are healed. But they had faith in the words of Jesus. Look at the latter part of verse 14. And it came to pass that as they went, they actually had the mind and they had the purpose and they actually went to show themselves unto the priest. It was the expression of their faith. As they went, they were cleansed. It's the faith. The faith that is demonstrated by action. Look at verse um, 19 here. And he said unto him, the one that came back, arise, go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. That's the evidence of the faith. When Christ speaks, and you say you have faith in him, you will do what he has said as the work accompanying the faith. In Acts 
chapter 16, Acts chapter 16, reading from Versace. Faith that's evidenced and discerned through works. Acts chapter 16, verse 30, and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Verse 32. And they speak unto him the word of the Lord. You know, there are people, all I want is, I believe. I believe. Hear the word of God. Uh -uh. I believe. I believe. Sit down. Hear the word of God. Let the word that produces abiding faith, active faith, practical faith, enter into you. Uh -uh. I believe already. But you see the action of the man. He heard the word of God and with all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes. That's the work. He washed their stripes, the work of compassion and the work of being merciful and the work of sympathy with those who are suffering and was baptized and all his straightway. And when he had brought them to his house in the work of hospitality, in the past, he counted them as prisoners, but now he's a fellow believer. And because of that faith, you see the work that followed. He set meat before them and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. That's the evidence of the faith. Acts. Chapter 19, reading from verse 18. Acts, chapter 19, verse 18. And many that believed came. They believed. How are we going to know that? They are facing Christ. How are we going to discern that? What evidence do we have that they actually believed? And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. And many of them also, which used curious acts, brought their books together and burnt them. That's the abiding work, the appropriate works, the accompanying works, that followed their faith. They brought their magical books together and bunched them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found each 50 pieces of silver. It's the action that shows that the faith is alive. John chapter 8, verse 11. And verse 12, John chapter 8, verse 11, and verse 12. And she said, No, my Lord, I believe in you, you are my Lord. Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee, but go and sin no more. You are forgiven. Now show it by the life you live after that forgiveness. You're saved. Show it by the life you live after that salvation. Neither do I condemn you. Neither do I consign you to hell. But now go and sin no more. Then speak Jesus again unto them, saying, 
I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness. He that believes in me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. The statue, as he speak these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews who believed on him, if he continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. I pray we'll be disciples indeed in Jesus' name. Point number three, the exploits and the demonstration of faith with works. We're coming to James chapter 2, verse 21. James chapter 2, verse 21. The exploits and the demonstration of faith was works. 21. Was not Abraham a father justified by works? When he had offered Isaac, his son, upon the altar, seest thou how faith wrought with his works? Faith wrought with his works? Faith demonstrated by his works? Faith doing exploits through his works action? And by works was faith made perfect. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8. Hebrews 11, verse 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place, which he should after receive an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whither he went. He was called to go out by faith. He went out. Go out. He went out by faith. Second Corinthians chapter six. Verse 17, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be you separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. The same commandment comes to us. Wherefore, come out. From among the drunkards, from among the gangs, come out. From among the association, association of sinners, of deceivers, come out from among them, among the occultic, come out from among them, among the worldly wise, come out, touch not the unclean sin, and I will receive you. And the faith that has evidence and experience will be the faith that makes you to come out immediately like Abraham did. And will be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. I pray your faith will produce action. I said your faith will produce action. Yeah. And the evidence of faith will not be missing in your life in Jesus' name. Yeah. We're coming to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 17. Hebrews 11, verse 17. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son 
understand here by faith the most precious sin he had the most precious commodity he could lay claim to and the most precious possession is Isaac the Lord tried him and said offer up Isaac and we're told he offered him up unto God his only begotten son of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called accounting that God was able to raise him up from the dead even from the dead from whence also he received him in a figure he offered up his Isaac and he received him back it's by faith we offer to the Lord and what we offer to the Lord will receive back a multiplied folds in Jesus name first Kings chapter 17 by faith you give it up by faith you offer it and it is that kind of faith that has expression that does exploits first Kings chapter 17 verse 8 and the word of the Lord came unto him saying arise get thee to Zarephas where belongeth to Zidon and dwell there behold I've commanded the widow woman there to sustain thee so he arose he had faith a widow woman is going to sustain me what about that he arose a widow woman I've never met, I've never seen, you've commanded him, what's her name? He has not given the name, and so he arose, that's faith, that's faith, and he went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks, and he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And the widow woman did not say, I'm at the end of my provision. Are you asking me for water? Look at what God has done for me. Look at the situation in which I am. Look at my predicament. No, people of faith don't complain. People of faith demonstrate their faith. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and for my son, that we may eat it. Tell me, but you will not die. I said, You will not die. It appears there's no work, no sustenance, no help, no hope no bank account and yet the lord is asking you even the little in your hand offer that i seek unto me by faith faith works and faith obeys and faith does something and elijah said unto her fear not and the lord is saying to you today fear not Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, after make for thee and for thy son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste neither the cross of oil fail in your family in your life 
until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the land. How do you know that the woman actually believed by doing what the prophet had said? Look at it now in verse 15. And she went, like Abraham, and she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house did eat many days. The promise of God will be yes and amen in your life. But you know, we need to have practical faith, the faith that works. The faith that will not look at the littleness of what I have, and then I cannot be faithful, I cannot have faith. I cannot give anything to God anymore. Abraham gave by faith. This woman gave by faith. You will give by faith. And your cup will not run dry. Your barrel will not run dry. And the barrel of meal wasted not. Neither did the cross of oil fail according to the word of the Lord, which is speak by Elijah. The word of God will work in your life. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 3. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim the fast throughout all Judah. Look at verse 12. In verse 12 it says, O our God, what wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither do we know what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. Your eyes are upon the Lord. Even when you do not have anything to show for it, believe God, the Lord will turn the situation around in Jesus' name. Look at verse 20. And they rose early in the morning, and they went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went, Joshua stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God. They were fearful. Believe in the Lord your God. They didn't know what to do. Believe in the word of the Lord your God. And the enemy outnumbered them. Believe in the Lord your God. So shall ye be established. You are established in Jesus' name. Believe also in his prophets. And so shall ye prosper. Somebody there is going to prosper. Yeah. You will prosper in Jesus' name. Believe everything will be all right. Now, they were fearful before. They have been told now, believe. What's going to be the response to that word, believe? It's like they were sorrowful. They could have been crying. They could have been staying, saying, life is coming to an end. But now they are told, believe. When you believe, what are you going to do? Verse 21. And when they had consulted with the people, consulted with the people, do you believe? Yes, I believe. Do you believe? Yes, I believe. How do we show our faith? How do we demonstrate our faith? We were fearful before, but now we believe. We were sorrowful before, now we believe and they consulted. What are we going to do? And it says, the appointed singers unto the Lord. You must do something that shows that you are believing and that they shall praise the beauty of holiness. 
The problem was still there. She praised the beauty of his holiness. The enemies were still there. And the war was still there. The battle was still there. And the enemies still had their weapons in their hands. And they were ready to shoot. And they were ready to destroy Jehoshaphat and the people of Judah. And yet they said, we have believed because the Lord has given us the word. And they did something that showed they were believing that shall praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and to say, praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. Praise the Lord for his mercy endureth until this day. Praise the Lord for his mercy extends endureth until tomorrow. Praise the Lord for his mercy will endure until the end of your life. Praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. And when they began to sing as the evidence of their faith, when they began to sing and to praise as to the practical faith they demonstrated, the Lord sent ambushments against the children of Ammon. Your enemies are defeated. And Moab, they are all gone. And of Mount Seir, which were come against Judah. And they were smitten. And they are smitten. And they are destroyed. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir to utterly slay and to destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, every one of those your enemies held to destroy themselves, destroy one another. Their arrows will not touch you. Their spears will not touch you. Their magic will not come near your doorstep. And their messengers of death will never know the address of your house but they will destroy one another. And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, those your enemies, they were all dead bodies falling to the earth, and none escaped. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came, to take away the spoil of them, they found among them, they found among them, I find among them, you find among them, what? What are you finding? Abundance, both riches, or the dead bodies, and precious jewels, which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry more than you can carry more than you ever desired and they were three days in gathering the spoil for it was so much blessings for it was so much abundance for it was so much as it was so it is today so it will ever be faith the face that works, that will not cry anymore. The face that will not complain anymore. The faith that will not weep anymore. The faith that will keep on singing. That will keep on rejoicing. That will keep on praising the Lord. And the beauty of holiness will be manifested in your life in Jesus' name. And the abundance of his blessing will be reflected in your life in Jesus' name. By this faith, we're, we're saved. By this faith, we're sanctified. By this faith, we're baptized in the Holy Ghost. By this faith, we're healed. By this faith, we're provided for. By this faith, we're blessed. By this faith, we're delivered. By this faith, we'll make it on the day of rapture. Receive that faith and should demonstrate that faith and your blessings will never come to an end in Jesus' name. Rise up and pray, but pray in faith. Rise up and tell the Lord what the need is, but tell him in faith. And after the prayer, let faith now keep on rejoicing. Let faith now keep on singing. Let faith now keep on praising the Lord. Open your mouth and tell the Lord, 
Sage is by faith. You turn away from sin. Don't allow dead faith to continue. Faith must have the works. Faith must have the action. Faith must be shown by the transformation. Faith must be shown by the new character, by the new behavior. Faith for salvation. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And our faith produces corresponding action. Believe on the Lord and you'll be sanctified. That faith produces corresponding action. You love the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. Believe in the Lord. You'll be baptized in the Holy Ghost. That faith is revealed by the power that comes into your life. Believe God, you will meet all your needs. Believe God, impossibilities will be possible. Believe God, you will not lack. Believe God, he will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Believe God, enemies, visible, invisible, will be defeated. Accept what the Lord has given. Accept what the Lord has provided. Don't allow your faith to be dead faith. Faith without corresponding action. Faith without peace, without joy, faith without fruit, faith without love, faith without patience, faith without long suffering, faith without kindness. That's that faith. If you say your sins are forgiven, show it by the life you live. You say you are saved, you are sanctified, let it be lively faith, active faith, show it by what that faith produces. You have faith, you are fearless. You throw up timidity. You throw up cowardice. You have faith. Your life will be active. Your life will be powerful. There will be exploits of faith through your life. You have faith. There will be demonstration of that faith. You'll give cheerfully. You'll give happily. Your faith, you'll overcome temptation. You overcome the tempter. The faith that overcomes. You'll be victorious. You no more be sad. Heavy hearted, complaining, your face, you'll have joy. You'll not be walking by sight. And no matter how many challenges you see, faith can sink. Faith can express joy. Express happiness. Show the Lord your faith by your action. Show your friends your faith 
by your action. Let that face have its permanent demonstration. Believe and all will be well. In Jesus' name I pray. Did you pray in faith? Yes. I said, did you pray in faith? Yes. It will be done. Yes. And you'll go on rejoicing, knowing it is done already in Jesus' name. Yes. If you're asked for salvation, thank God you are saved. Yes. If you're asked for healing, Thank God you're healed. Yeah. If you ask for provision, thank God it's done already in Jesus' name. Yeah. Whatever promise of God you have asked for, for him to fulfill, thank God it is done. Yeah. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. Your action, your response, your attitude, your excitement, your joy, the spring under your feet. As you go back home, we show that you really believe. Thank God I join my faith with your faith. It is done. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every brother and every sister. I pray, Lord, nobody will go back home empty-handed in Jesus' name. Your promises are yes and amen. You cannot fail, you will not fail. There is no disappointment in our God. And I pray for everyone from the youngest of us to the oldest of us, the men and the women, the boys and the girls, everyone. I pray, Lord, this evidence of faith will be a reality in every life in Jesus' name. Forgive those who have confessed and forsaken their sins. Sanctify the people that have laid everything upon the altar. Baptize the sanctified in the Holy Ghost. Heal those who are sick. Sickness will not kill them. This infirmity will not destroy them. What is called incurable diseases will not be part of their lives in Jesus' name. The diseases upon the Egyptians will not be upon the Israel of God. And therefore, Lord, as you have proclaimed that you are the Lord that heals us, healing on everyone in Jesus' name. And I pray the arrows of the enemy will never get to any of your people. Deliver everyone from evil. And break every yoke in every life. And destroy the works of the devil in every life. And all the arrows and the powers of Satan coming from the dark world will stop before it gets to them in Jesus' name. And for those who are living from hand to mouth, they are poor. Lord, let abundance come into their lives. Provide for everyone. We know that this prayer will not fail. We know that the face of your people will not be in vain. Let provision come to every life. Joy to every heart. Abundance to everyone. And victory to everyone in Jesus' name. Lord, your people will sing with joy. And as they go back home rejoicing, let the promises be going on, being fulfilled in every life. Yeah. And as we come back another time, we'll come back with testimonies in our mouth. Confirm it, Lord, in every life. 
We thank you because our faith is alive. And the exploits of living faith will be upon every life. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray.